Hello and welcome to episode 120 of Radio Call Press. It is our end of the year show. We made it, guys. We did it. <laughs> and we're all in the same room. <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> the longest yeah, boy in the world. Um, <gasps> I'm not going to do it. <laughs> um, with me, as ever, are Sarah and Phil. Hello. I'm Hi. Rosie. Hello. Um End of the year. Brilliant. We didn't die. We made it out alive. I, I mean, it was touch and go for a while. <laughs> I think um, getting out alive is the best that we can hope for this year. It's yeah. Fair. I it's mean, it's, it's been a legitimate shit show. Oh, it's been an absolute trash fire. Yes. From start to end. 2021 dumpster fire <laughs> completely. So uh, if you haven't been with us for over a year and you haven't listened to our end of the year show before... What we uh, do is we pick our five favourite films uh, that we've seen this year um, with maybe a couple of tweaks and just have a quick discussion about them and why we like them so much. It is tradition. It is, and we love it. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, let's crack on. These shows are generally pretty formless, like so. Just, just a bit as of a if we have any yeah. form any other episode. <laughs> well, we do. <laughs> Very dare you. How I just turn into an even more blob. <laughs> <laughs> I was form. wondering. <laughs> My Didn't form is circular. circular. <laughs> <laughs> My form after Christmas will definitely be circular. <laughs> Heckin' round. <laughs> Cannot wait to get fat and sassy. Same. Well, we're already sassy. Yep. We're already like hot 50% of the way there. So <laughs> Christmas overindulgence. We'll see to the rest. Yeah. So I wasn't here for last year's show. I missed the end of the year last year. Um, sure. I'm going to take your word for that because <laughs> so much has happened I can't remember. <laughs> I was, I think I was poorly or my computer wasn't working or something. There was you some were poorly or your computer was poorly. <laughs> yeah. Some one of us poorly. was poorly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I wasn't here. So you guys are going to have to give me the download on what structure this is going to work. Oh, completely in. structure free. <laughs> Excellent. Just complete free form amateur dramatics nonsense. <laughs> Just yell something out and we'll talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, number five on my list. Actually, Ooh, there's, these, they're not in a... Yeah, we generally don't do like a descending order because I don't... So so I have a top one and then right. I have a... Perfect. Excellent. Okay, so <laughs> like f- five of mm, blah, 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 blah. Uh-huh. Uh, Squid Game. Mm-hmm. Cool. Mm-hmm. I am I'm starting off list. with not a film. Yeah. Um, that trend will continue, <laughs> I'm sure. But we decided uh, a couple of years ago now, I think, because Phil chose a game for his top five. So we decided that we would All relax. bets are off. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, all bets are off. We're the adults. We decide. It's our podcast. We can do what we want. We yeah. can have chocolate for breakfast if we want. <gasps> can we? At Christmas, you can do whatever the <laughs> fuck you want. Christmas Day biscuits for breakfast. It's the way forward. Biscuits, chocolate, well, chocolate biscuits. Oh right. I th- well, so, some people say <laughs> biscuits mean different things to different people. Oh, they? not like one of those weird scone <laughs> things. That would be weird. Like a biscuit with gravy. Like that's a, an American thing. That plate, is an American plate thing. Plated digestives <laughs> with gravy. <laughs> With Bisto. <laughs> that is the northern way. <laughs> oh, God. Um, although my brother-in-law insists on us having pork pies and Buck's Fizz. Like, vegan pork pie, obviously, but pork pie and Buck's Fizz for breakfast with, like, mustard. Why? I don't know, but it's all right. I would prefer biscuits. Start off with the biscuits and you work up to the pork pie. Oh, right. So pre-breakfast is biscuits, then breakfast is pork pie. And, and then you have lemon sort of mimosa. Then you have brunch. Right. And then you're on to Christmas lunch. Christmas dinner. I don't... See, I tend not to have, like, structured meals. I, I just graze. I just start eating and then don't stop generally the until sleep. The dream. <laughs> yeah. Until your afternoon nap. Yes. Hi, Burke. <laughs> um, squid Game. Mm. Okay. That's on mine. So that's... Yay. Oh, we've got some overlap already. Mm-hmm. We Interesting. do have some overlap already. Squid Game, I felt like it would be completely remiss to leave it out because mm-hmm. it was such a massive thing this year. It's been <sighs> And deservedly, deservedly so. Yeah. 
Um, but surprising, yeah. I think. Not because it, it doesn't kind of came to be. from out of nowhere, didn't it? It did. It arrived completely out of the blue. But when I say surprising, I mean that so many people are like resistant to subtitles. Mm. It shocked mm. me how popular it became so quickly. I am willing to bet that quite a lot of people watched oh, the dubbed, dubbed version, no. though, <laughs> which was a problem because the dubbing didn't line up with the subtitles. Oh, um, apparently yeah, they were they, 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 they were quite that. different, and they actually told slightly different stories. Oh wow! Um, just because it was bad dubbing, basically. So if I rewatch it, will it be like a choose your own adventure thing? or get a slightly <laughs> different experience the next time around. Well, if you've watched it with <laughs> the subtitles, then I would just say your experience the next time would be shit. Just in theory, yeah. <laughs> okay. just like this, worse. but worse. <laughs> and they've all got terrible accents as well. Oh no! It's very bad. Because I thought it was a dubbed show, so I watched the mm. first episode dubbed. Right. Then realised it had subtitles, so I actually ah. rewatched the first episode with the subtitles, and it was different. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. Um, now's probably a good time to say there will be mild spoilers for everything that we talk about, but because everything came out this year, we'll try to keep it to a minimum. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but what I will say about Squid Game, yes, I thought it was really interesting in episode one, where it's just like, oh, this is our protagonist. He is a piece of actual shit. <laughs> yeah, he's a terrible, terrible man. And then towards the end, he was nice to a cat, and I'm like, that's all it took to bring <laughs> me back over. <laughs> shit to his daughter, nice to a cat. Yeah, that's all it takes. But I'm then, just like, oh, all right, yeah, no, yeah, I'm okay with this. <laughs> gave him a bit of your dinner. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. We're all right. <laughs> it, I mean, it, it had so many... Really tense moments, mm. obviously. Like, the tension was carried on for a while, which was difficult to do in a yeah. series. Mm. Um, I liked the twists and turns that it had as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There were certain things that I felt maybe didn't work so well. Like, one of the challenges, I was like, I know how you can get through that without dying. <laughs> Did you? Interesting. Yeah. See, I don't think I... Maybe this is where I got the idea that I would be terrible at escape rooms from because I don't, <laughs> I'm not very good at like critical thinking. In that well, it was the way. it was the bridge challenge. Okay, and um, I was like, yeah. yeah, I could do that. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, I'd have been wholesale. I'd have been up shit creek, <laughs> zero paddles, and down. Shit yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just it's not my favorite thing that i've watched this year but it was thoroughly enjoyable i got very hooked onto it quite quickly mm. it took me a while to actually get round to watching it because i got a bit of oppositional defiance about i was the it. same i was the same it took like i still month. haven't watched tiger king <laughs> and i have Any no intention of it no. it's not as good as people made it out to be I don't want to watch a show with loads of tigers in cages. Yeah, it's just terrible people being horrible to animals and each other. Mm. Yeah, not interested. No. <laughs> not not my cup of tea. Although, terrible people dying for money, apparently <laughs> that is. Well, this was fictional, at least. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Tiger King was horribly real. <laughs> what, um, what I loved about Squid Game is how, and I won't spoil things, how quickly you actually... It got you attached to some of the characters. Yeah, like there's one character, a couple of characters meet in a, in like episode five. And oh, Ali! Uh, just... mm. <laughs> the less said about that, the better. Yeah, exactly. I don't but, want this you to know, turn into a basically you don't you don't, miss, you don't these characters don't stick around for long. But at the time they're there, they become really, mm. really kind of um, you get really emotionally invested into them, and I think that's quite mm. impressive. For saying it's a TV show and these aren't the protagonists. I guess if you consider the screen time that they yeah, have exactly. like, to be so invested in like, their... If it was a main character, then kind of fine. But you've got two-ish episodes of a show in which they're getting a little bit of screen time and you're still invested. Like, that's mm. that's really impressive writing, you know? And also, on the other side, being invested in people who you fucking hate. Yeah. Yeah. And mm. you, want, you want them to <laughs> get it. That's a really... I think that's testament to really good writing yeah. when people are despicable, but you still find yourself so compelled by their stories. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. And also I think the the characters were really well written. Um, and this might sound terrible, but I'm just stating a fact, but like, unlike with Western shows, you can't be like, Oh, which one's that? It's the one with the dark hair. Yeah. I, <laughs> I didn't clear it up. Do you know what no. I mean? Yeah, I so, know exactly what you mean. I think it goes to show how well written each character was. It's got to be quite difficult as well to effectively write a Korean show for a Western audience. 
Did they? Was it specifically sort of threatened not to sure. be exported? I'm not sure, honestly. But the fact that it did so well for a yeah. Western audience, again, is testament to how smart the writing was because mm-hmm. it works in different languages. Like, that's... Yeah. And the sarcasm and intonation and all of that mm. all transferred very well. Yes, there was very little that was lost in translation. Mm. I thought that was really mm. smart. Yeah, that's interesting. Cool. So, my first choice. Okay. Um, it's not on my list. Mm-hmm. But I do have a TV show on my list. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, so my cheat is Midnight Mass. My do. <laughs> Another overlap. We'll be done in about 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> We've all got the same Our top down. five are identical. Um, yeah, I, I sat long and hard and thought about whether or not to include a TV show on my top five. But I couldn't not. I've watched it all the way through twice. I, it was just so good. I enjoyed it. Right, so... I'll be honest, the first time I watched it, until about the halfway point, there were a lot of kind of Mike Flanaganisms <laughs> that I picked up because I, I think he's so prolific as a horror viewer, it's really difficult not to be quite well versed in his work because yeah. he does so much. And I've enjoyed his films since Absentia. So, like, it was hitting a lot of the same beats that I've seen again and again in his stuff. Mm. And I found myself able to predict things as a result. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I would agree with that. Yeah. So up until the halfway point, that kind of affected my enjoyment of it until I realised I was just so emotionally invested in this story that it didn't matter anymore. And I was just like, it was magnetic. Yeah. Which sounds like a really wanky thing to say, but like I couldn't take my eyes off screen. It's like when you um, find a book that you cannot put mm. down. Yeah. It, it's exactly like that. It's it's. I know that I often refer to things as being like you know a car crash or something. You can't mm-hmm. look away from it, but it's not that. It's not looking when you don't want to. It's just being utterly engrossed. Yeah. In the story Absolutely. and the characters. Yeah, and I, I think it's kind of a no brainer for me because I love religious horror mm. and um, kind of. No, I'm not going to say it because it's a spoiler. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to be really careful because Bill seen hasn't it, seen it. Um, but it it hits a couple of things, uh, a couple of horror tropes that I fucking love. So like, it is just absolutely my jam. And I think it has like elements of action to it as well, yeah. which um, it's so tense in places. Yeah. And I think on first viewing, like the monologuing kind of did my head in a little bit, but on mm. second viewing. I was able to sit back and go, fuck me, this is so well written. This yeah. is genius. Like, appreciate what they're actually saying instead of going, yeah. oh, it's a fucking monologue. And without spoiling anything, I'm not going to get into specifics, but those who have seen it will know that, like, the parallels that are drawn between the main things that it depicts are so obvious I don't know why it hadn't been done before. Yeah. It was crazy. It's to the like, point where I was like, has this been... Is this a remake? Has this, has this been same, made before? Same. I googled it and I couldn't find any instance of it having been done like, well, at all, but certainly not in this way. Um, it's one of those things where it's a really simple idea that's executed incredibly well. Perfectly. Yeah. Um, like everybody in it was just phenomenal as well. And some of the dialogue when it came to kind of existentialism and like really big ideas about life and death and stuff and it they were dealt with so respectfully and but it was really thought provoking and it had a lot to say and it was just like you say engrossing Mm. engrossing is the word yeah i would say it's definitely out of television shows it is my top show of the year i think it's my favorite thing that i've seen all year it's just great yeah it's just just like like perfect tv yeah yeah it's scintillating it's scary in places it's thought-provoking like you said it's yeah if hamish linkletter doesn't get an emmy so what's he called hamish hamo linklow <laughs> <laughs> hey, my Linglo. our friend hamo linklow um if he doesn't get an emmy I, i'm gonna write it in the I'm gonna fucking flip street. this task am i am i it's very light like i can't think of another 
performance that comes close mm. for no, this year. I so say yes as if I've said Yeah, it's like what you said, yes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Although I haven't seen things like uh, The Crown, for example. Well, neither of mine, because I value my time. And well, yes, shit. exactly. <laughs> but it has got Olivia Coleman in it being True. the queen. She's so great. I think he's going to have some hard fights to fight for an Emmy. She's always a fucking queen. Mm-hmm. Fucking love <laughs> Olivia Coleman. <laughs> National brilliant. treasure. She must be protected at all costs. <laughs> have you listened to any interviews with her? No, I she's just actually. adorable. I get that impression. She's so sweet and lovely and just <laughs> bubbly and cute. And oh, I love her. Absolutely love her. She gives me hope for the human race. But I, she's she's won a ton of awards. So let's give this one to Hey Mo. <laughs> hey Mo <Lingo. laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So cool. Ridiculous. <laughs> I'm never going to call him anything else. <laughs> Two knocked off the list. No. Nice. Gosh. Uh, and this will be a, another crossover. I okay. know. Um, my first is Candyman. Mm. And that was on yours, Sarah. Yes. Yes, it Had is. Had a bit of a chat. I haven't seen it. Okay. Spoiler Some free. VOD now, right? I don't actually know. I haven't checked. It's not streaming anywhere for free just yet. Right. But I can rent it. Yes. Okay. Um, it's worth it oh my god <laughs> I saw it twice in the cinema which is rare for me these days but just the um, how kind of uh, they expanded the mythos I think mm. I really appreciated that um, while respecting it yeah yeah and it it, it didn't uh, yeah you're right like they, they still were were true to the um, true to the original yeah definitely <laughs> <laughs> so you both get distracted by something and I'm like what's happened just, a cat so ignore course, me I'm just cat. flipping off my cat it's um, a <laughs> there's some really neat uh, kind of stylistic choices mm. um, again we'll really say what they are because they don't spoil things but um, yeah they're like, really good touches they honoured the original really well are there bees um, there are some bees, are some yes. bees. <laughs> the bees <laughs> no you're right the whole thing looks fucking stunning mm-hmm. it's so like the cinematographer um, hopefully was paid handsomely because it looks incredible mm. um, and just I really love what they did with the music as well in a similar way that they did uh, they updated um, the Halloween theme for 2018's yeah. Halloween they did a similar thing with like uh, the Philip Glass score which I know you have <laughs> issues with <laughs> Philip Glass Rosie Fucking but, <laughs> but they <Piece> of shit. <laughs> they sort of modernised the original like the really recognisable theme music and it was mm. done just chef kiss. Mm. Oh, oh, what? <laughs> Perfectly. Yeah. And yeah. I think, um, well, we've talked about it on the mini set a little yeah, bit anyway, yeah. so That's we don't I want to like, go I, too I, much. Exactly. But, exactly. Um, but I think it was nice that in a black story, the black people were actually centred this mm, time. Mm. <laughs> and it's great. Like, it's great that, you know, people like Jordan Peele are getting, because he produced it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he I think wrote, wrote it as well. well yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, are, are actually getting their... Um, Getting attention, you know? Yeah, and getting stuff like this made. And again, mm-hmm. deservedly so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think when was the original? 1992. Mm-hmm. So it took that long for, like, <sighs> black people to be actually centred mm-hmm. <laughs> in this story that revolves around them. And obviously it was written by a white Liverpoolian. Yeah, yeah. Well, and directed by a white guy. But the choice to kind of transplant the story to uh, the Chicago kind of slums you know makes a lot of sense mm. to, to center a blonde white woman in the original was questionable mm. so yeah it was just really nice it was really nice and um what's his name yeah yeah abdul mateen the second not sure i'll take I your name say. For that. the guy who that. is the main character anthony yeah. um just incredible god yeah, damn yeah. i yeah. want to see him in so much more like he's yeah. so commanding Ooh. on screen he's he's a really big guy so he's quite He's got real incredible presence. Like presence on yeah. screen, yeah. Yeah, mm. I'm really excited to see him and more stuff. I'm really excited to actually get around to watching Candyman. Because <laughs> mm. think... it's been a very long time since I saw the original. I think you'd like it. I think the overall feeling is pretty good, but mm. I have spoken to a few people who very much didn't enjoy it. I know somebody who absolutely hated it. Yes. And <laughs> it seems to be quite divisive in that respect. Yeah. That yeah. it's either great or it's trash. Yeah, uh, and I've heard people call it too woke for its own good, and I'm just like, well, 
oh no, it's yeah. too it's too socially conscious. Whatever will we do? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> what a weird complaint. To it, have. it says too much about the state of the world. <laughs> yeah. Or oh, it's too heavy-handed. I don't care if it was heavy-handed, it was still done really mm. bloody well. Anyway. <laughs> yes. Is that was um, my fans list. My cool. next choice, um, I believe that's all the crossovers we have now. Um, my yeah. next choice, I'm gonna go for Sensor. Okay, seen this that. is yeah, this well, is heard of it. You're the only one who's seen it. So Sensor in the world, in the world. <laughs> does it exist? <laughs> who knows? Um, Sensor is about a woman who works as a film censor um, during the whole Mary Whitehouse era mm. of video nasties. <laughs> we and, do not say that name uh, on this podcast. Mary Whitehouse. <laughs> um, Mary Shite House. <laughs> Oh, that was much better. <laughs> Both interchangeable. <laughs> Same effect. What a dick. Um, but yeah, during like this whole video nasty era and like things being banned or having uh, stuff cut out of them and stuff, like it's her job to watch all of this incredibly visceral films oh. and cut out the bits that she doesn't agree with. Okay. Um, and she works with like a team of people. Um, it's not really a spoiler. Um, is, it is part of the storyline. Um, years and years back, her sister uh, goes missing and she has sort of, while well, she's been working, devoted her life to trying to find her sister again. Okay. And the story progresses from that point of her watching all of this incredibly affecting stuff um, and she watches one film, which is a bit too reminiscent. Mm. Um, and it's basically the events that unfold after that as she's trying to find her sister whilst... Okay. So it's it's not... Um, it's kind of a bit on left field for what you think the film is about. Yeah. Um, the ending is chef kiss. Okay. So good. Um, <laughs> and I literally can't say any more than that. Just like it is, it is winner the awesome. ending to it. But it's excellently directed. The cinematography again is is so true to the era that it was from. Period piece. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So it's so it's like eighties. Ooh. Um. And so she wears like you know aviators and high necks. Um shirts and like amazing wide hipped work trousers and stuff and yeah like it's really really cool and <laughs> okay. visually is very um aff- some parts are very affecting visually definitely am, am i right in thinking it's a foreign film or have i misunderstood um no it's not a foreign film it's not no it's set in england oh right it's set in England. Um, her parents are Irish. Oh, I must be confusing this with something else. Then I know I've heard some of the some of our uh, Discord fam kind of singing its praises. Maybe they said it was a foreign film because they live in America. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> 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 Fucking limes. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, there are visual like filming aspects that they use. So like the very beginning of the film is in like square CRT aspect. Okay. Nice. And then it widens out as the film begins and stuff. And they just use some really like cool little nods to mm. the film that used to be used at the time and like the technology mm. that was used at the time as well. So that's very cool. Lots lots of VHS. That's interesting. Oh well it's been on my to watch list for a while, but I think it's just shot to the top of my to watch list. I now. I think you will a hundred percent dig it. Yeah. Yeah. Very much up your alley. Awesome. Yeah. Massively cool. sad. I'm sad I didn't find time to get that one watched before we did <laughs> this then. Oh well. <laughs> so yeah. Cool. What's next? <sighs> right. So I'm gonna have to include one. Um basically so that my partner doesn't leave me. <laughs> <laughs> and I know exactly what it is. <laughs> if I don't mention Psycho Gorman, somebody's gonna be very <laughs> unhappy with me. I still haven't finished it. Still that watched blows it. my mind. It's so fun. Got, need to. got 20 minutes through it and was like, nah. 20 minutes. 20 minutes into it and we were like, nah, not feeling it. Oh, man. See, I almost put Vicious Fun on my list as well because it's been a good year for Canadian horror comedies. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is. I think I just really 
align with the Canadian sense of humour. And I think, I like, I was a huge fan of Astron 6, and they obviously disbanded. Oh, yeah, of mm. course. Um, and Kostansky did The Void. Yeah. And then Psycho Gorman. So, I mean, Psycho Gorman is basically as close to an Astron 6 movie as we're ever going to get now. And it just was pitch perfect. It was really funny, really silly, but a lot of the effects were pretty good. Like, the effects were good. The effects were really work. good, yeah. Was that really imaginative? Did you ever? Did you get the to bits the point that with, I saw? Yeah. Did you get to the point with the? Um, oh God, I can't remember what they were called. Um, just all these different creatures around like a board table having a meeting. No. D- some of the creature design was genuinely brilliant. Like so imaginative. I saw. I think one of the only bits of like uh, f- physical effects that I saw was Psycho Gorman basically exploding somebody. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's achieved really well. Um, and none of this is spoiling it because no. it, the film is exactly what the title sounds like. Mm. Oh, yeah, there are very few surprises. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it's just done really well. And it's genuinely funny as well. I think a lot of these films can aim for that level of humour, but take a detour into cringe. I think I probably need to rewatch it by myself. Okay. Or with other people who I know enjoy it. Mm. Watch it with me and Dan. You'll have a blast. (laughs) (laughs) I do not like hunky boys. (laughs) Or do I? (laughs) It's brilliant. It's it's quotable. And it's fun. And it's just... It was kind of a breath of fresh air that I think this year needed. (laughs) Do you think it's going to become a bit of a cult classic? I think it already has. Um... I think it's kind of... It's weird. I was having this conversation with somebody the other day about how it usually takes a lot longer for films to become cult classics, but that seems to have sort of slotted in some strange space where it's occupied that title immediately. Because, mm. like, Cavity Colours did um, a, a series of T-shirts. Match, yeah. The year the film came out, that's kind of unheard of. Normally it's stuff like Killer Clowns or Trick or Treat or Elvira, stuff that's been Mm. around for decades. But then I guess we're in a situation now where people don't talk to each other as much as they used to. People don't talk to Mm. each other as much because we can't see each other. Yeah. And so when we do see each other, it it makes sense to sort of emblazon the things that you currently love on you. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> like I, I get it I understand Like hunky boys Like hunky boys <laughs> I wish to be emblazoned With hunky boys I think Yeah That kind of coupled With the fact that uh, A lot of the other films That occupy the cult Classic space Were Maybe like A bit older VHS era Harder to get hold of And mm. now Stuff like Psycho Gorman Is going immediately Straight onto Shudder mm. Where it's Available From day one For mass consumption mm. So it's finding its audience straight away, whereas previously it took, you know, a decade or more for people to disseminate these shittily copied VHS tapes. Yeah, and like, exactly. Yeah. It's interesting, though. Yeah, for sure. But I think it does deserve that title of cult classic. So. I will okay. rewatch it. I, I will. I'll, I'll, I'll watch all of it. How about that? Okay. I'll finish it. <laughs> <laughs> for you. Thank you. I'm done. <laughs> Because I want him to be my friend. He will appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, mine, and this is perhaps one of my favourite of the year, not that oh. we're necessarily oh. Um, oh. listing them uh, in order, okay. but uh, Last Night in Soho. Finally watched that the other day. Okay, so I suspected this was going to be <laughs> I a loved top it. five. Like, it was such a surprise because Edgar Wright, to me, has always had a vein of comedy running through his films. Mm -hmm. Regardless of what... There's always a vein of comedy, always a vein of horror. I think even even Spaced is kind of... Not horrific, but it's... Oh, there are so many references. Grotesque. But there's like (laughs) constant references to classic horror movies as well. Um, But an out-and-out horror, like I wasn't expecting it to be so... uh, Not devoid of humour, because there's there's a bit of it. There are moments... Mrs. Doyle. Why is nobody talking about the fact that Mrs. Doyle from Father Ted is in it? <laughs> what? Was she? Yeah, she was the landlady at the pub. Oh, I didn't <laughs> pick up on that. Yeah. Now I have to watch it. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, go on, it's got cocaine in it. <laughs> uh, go on. Go on. <laughs> I mean raisins. <laughs> but um, 
but it was just such a cleverly filmed movie. Mm. Uh, I think no other director could have done it quite as well as Edgar Wright, or very few directors at least, because he has that um, level of detail that he applies to his films that kind of elevate them above mm. uh, kind of other similar directors. All right, why um, don't you just marry him? <laughs> I might if you love him so much. <laughs> God. <laughs> but um but yeah, like I, I just loved it. I loved the the story working out what happened, the intrigue, the way it was shot, the level of foreboding that just had it had running throughout it. Just felt like no one was you just felt like everyone in there was just a bastard of some description, even if they <laughs> seemed really nice on the surface. Yeah. Um yeah, I I, I loved it. Okay. You didn't love it quite as much, did well, you? Well, I don't. I don't want to pipe up too much because it's this is the best of, and I don't want to shit on your hopes and dreams too much. <laughs> <laughs> shit on them. So <laughs> there we go. We're just going to clip that soundbite. <laughs> That's going to help me sell. Be how we sell the show. Shit on them. Um, no, I'm not going to shit on your hopes and dreams because it's a good film. It is a good film. I was unsure how I felt when I left the cinema and I sat and I read a few articles and I thought about it. And then the next morning I was like, three and a half, three and a half out of five seems fair. Mm. Cause I can't in good faith give it any higher than that. It looks like a four and a half for cinematography and editing mm. four and a half. But my issue with most Edgar Wright films is um, the character work. I always come away feeling like some of his scripts could have used another draft. Mm -hmm. Mm. And I think, like, for example... All right, then. Here's an example of what I mean. That's spoiler-free. The sort of love interest. Mm -hmm. Name a characteristic other than nice (laughs) that that character possessed. Okay. Do you see what I mean? There's a lot of, like, very two-dimensional characters. Imagine going in for the audition at that. (laughs) Just be nice. Yeah. But that's literally how what I assume his motivation was. Just be really nice. Yeah. Because that's I, ca- I cannot think of another kind of word for it. Beige. Um, and I think when he's not working with people like Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, who are very naturally charismatic, charismatic and funny, he falls down a little bit there. Okay. Um, but he only co-wrote the script, so somebody else is also. <laughs> but otherwise, like it is a good film. Um, but I think because to me it is it's just a giallo. Yeah, it's an English. Giallo yeah, I mean to me to me to like I I'm not quite as uh, much of a fan of, of giallo as as you are, and I think probably you're watching this film thinking, oh, there's a bunch of films that have done this better. Not necessarily no? better. I think it was very well done for what it was, but yeah. I think I'm just really familiar with a lot of the tropes. Mm. So I second guess the ending. A lot of it didn't come as a massive surprise. It is like, again, I'm not going to like crap on this because this is in your top five. I think you're, the reasons why you loved it are perfectly valid. But I think for me, it's just a very good looking kind of average horror history. Okay. (laughs) Feels like, all right, fine. (laughs) So we start from. No, I can see that. and, And maybe. Maybe on rewatching, I probably. No, pick no, up no. On the... I'm not. I'm not for a second trying to make you reevaluate. If it's, if it's in your top five. It's in your top five. Yeah. Stand Did by you it. Just imply you were going to rewatch it and hate it. <laughs> well, no, because uh, like um, with with mysteries, you're probably all caught up in the actual what's going on, trying to work out what's happening, mm. and you're not thinking about the film itself and like the characterization, for example, and uh, knowing what's uh, what I, going in, knowing what happens. Mm. Might I appreciate that. By the nature of what we do, we look at characterization and stuff. Mm. But it's perfectly fine to watch a film and just get sucked into it and just really enjoy it. Yeah, yeah and I of did. course. I you, did. Don't, you don't even have to justify it. Mm. You liked it. That's <laughs> fine. Bin. We've all got opinions. Or as I think the Swedes say, slut. <laughs> don't just start saying that. <laughs> After every time one of us says anything, slut. <laughs> We're going to have some explaining to do. <laughs> right, whose turn is it? It's my it's turn. You. And yeah. I think, actually, this is my last pick. Um, mm. Because we've had Midnight Mass. Um, Squid Game. We've had Squid Game. Yep. Censor. Censor. Um, 
<laughs> Maybe it's not. <laughs> Did you write this down anyway? No. <laughs> well, <laughs> Rosie might have a top four. It was another film. <laughs> let's let's hear about the one you remember, and hopefully they remember the fifth one. <laughs> oh no, you said come true. That's my next pick. Right. And oh. I think that's my final one. We'll talk about that and then have a think. <laughs> <laughs> We are ending the year as professionally as we started it. I can't remember my top five. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure we've already talked about the other four. Anyway, Come True is my top one film of the year. It's fucking great. You should watch it right now. Okay. Don't go away and watch Come True. What, us? Right now? Yes. Oh. Are you going to entertain everyone in our <laughs> absence? <laughs> yeah, <Yada die. laughs> <laughs> She'll do some card tricks. Oh wait, that doesn't work on a podcast. Uh, it does. All you'll, if you all you'll just hear pretend is... like they're all correct. Is this your card? I knew it. <laughs> um, yes, Come True is a. I think it's Canadian. Film Canadian. Board. Canadian. Okay. Uh, good year for Canadian horror, then. Yeah. Good year for Canadian horror. Good year for Korean horror. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think. I think those are the two standouts. Um, it's about a girl, I wish I could remember her name. She's got the oddest facial features. You know when people have eyes that are slightly too far apart? Mm. Yes. And they just look a little bit alien. Yeah, like, like that really she's... retro PlayStation advert where they mirrored yeah. the girl's face. Yeah. Uh, the, mm. Is it Chris <laughs> Cunningham? Did, did oh, that? it might be, yeah. Yeah, it was. Um, from Apex Twin. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it was him that did that. Robert um, That makes sense. Don't. T- don't. <laughs> That's a horror Philip. Film. That's a horror film. Rubber Johnny terrifies me. Yeah. Genuinely. Chris so Cunningham. creepy. <laughs> <laughs> he did, yeah. come to, come to, come to, did the uh, Come to Daddy Apex Twin video as well. That's a breeze compared <laughs> to Rubber Johnny. Jesus. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yes. Um, this girl, she has eyes which are very slightly too far apart. She's got a really slight figure as well. Um, very androgynous. I can't remember what her name is. but Barbara. <laughs> Let's go with that. Okay. So Babs, um, <laughs> she plays a girl called Sarah Dunn in the film. Um, and basically she appears to have some kind of issue with her family. So she is uh, just sleeping where she can find a place to sleep. Okay. Um, like in a park and stuff like that. Um, sneaking into the house to have a shower and then sneaking back out again, that kind of thing before her mum finds her. Oh God. Uh, so she's an 18 year old girl she's at university uh, but she's living at home um, and she sees a notice about a sleep study um, and it's basically we'll hook you up to all this machinery you just sleep you come back every night for two months and we'll pay you dollar and she's like sick I've got someone to sleep <laughs> dollar you say yeah <laughs> um, so she gets accepted onto this sleep study and then weird stuff starts happening okay it is the most intriguing film I have seen this year by far. Hmm. Um, the soundtrack is absolutely killer. It's got a really like. Is it oh, do you, when you say like original music or? It's original music, yeah. yeah. Um, as far as I'm aware, yeah. It, but it's it's all instrumental for the most part, um, and it's heavy sci-fi. Okay. So lots of synth, lots of the guest type oh i'm in soundtrack <laughs> um in. really good the uh there is a man of interest um who is very attractive <laughs> um he's like what daniel radcliffe would look like if daniel radcliffe was hot okay <laughs> okay <laughs> I'm trying I, to I, picture that. I line. think you might be able. I'll show you a well, picture later, and you, you'll so see. So my what I mean. my brain is just doing like a really buff dude with a <laughs> It went wrong somewhere in translation. I try. I, I love it. I love it. That's exactly what this guy looks like. Okay. Um. So yeah, weird stuff starts happening. The the best thing about <laughs> the best thing about um sci-fi films for me is and why i love them so much is because they have this freedom to delve into weird things that could potentially become reality okay mm. um well like the the boundary between real and imagined is sort of blurred yeah yeah absolutely okay. um but even to the point of like the uh, equipment that they use 
really good sci-fi manages to mix really like new space age equipment yeah with really old analog equipment okay or like really old you know like um they're watch so so these scientists are like watching people sleep on cctv but they've got these tiny little screens that they're watching them all on yeah and the um machinery that the sleepers are hooked up to like is just a green screen with loads of like you know the light green mm. yeah mm. sort of like almost like dot matrix kind of numbers uh-huh. and stuff so it's that mix of really old with really new Okay. And it's like they've... Is that kind of a bit disconcerting? It... <sighs> the film feels a little bit anachronistic. Yeah. Okay. Um, because, I mean, they have, like, cell phones and it's clearly modern day. Yeah. But the moment she steps into this lab, it's very different. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like she's stepping back 30 years Okay, so but that's intentional to sort of throw you a little bit, is it? I don't know. Okay, I don't know. It's it's never mentioned. It's mm. it's not like a um, discernible part of the plot line or anything. It was just okay. something that I noticed. Oh, interesting. But um, it has that really sort of floaty anachronism that it follows had. Yeah, which I love mm. anyway um, and find super interesting. Um, which again was just sort of like an unspoken. It was just there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Stylistically, it's all very muted. Yeah. Uh, It's a really muted palette. It's... Like in a Suspiria remake kind of a way? Or not quite that drab? Yeah, that drab, because a lot of it's set in a lab. So so actually even less colour, because you don't have all like the reds and browns and stuff. Okay. So a lot of it's set at night, obviously. Um... It's a sleep study, so I don't think it's spoiling it to say that you view some dream sequences. Okay. Um, but the dream sequences are just the closest thing that I think I've seen on a screen that is reminiscent of a dream that I've had. Oh, creepy. Like, because you know how dreams sort of like wash in and out of mm. each other yeah. and the colours are never quite bright enough and nothing's quite right like they managed somehow to transfer that to screen just okay. almost perfectly um and it genuinely some parts of it really scared me really yeah that's see now you've got me <laughs> because i don't get scared at horror films no i don't I, I, chase the, years. I chase that feeling though forever the the uneasiness Ooh. um scared me okay a fucking cat. <laughs> Look at him. What an idiot. <laughs> um, but yeah, top like solid ten out of ten. Awesome. Absolutely love it. I want to watch it again so bad. That's insane. I don't think any of my top five are. T- Actually, I haven't no, heard. I haven't heard Midnight Mass anything ten. about it either. Mm. I literally was looking at. I think it was a. I was running down a list that, like, Rotten Tomatoes had released of, like, their top-rated films of the year. Okay. And that came up as, like, 85% or something. And I saw sci-fi horror and went, I will give that a bash. (laughs) And to watch that yesterday. Did not disappoint at all. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Because it's one, obviously, I haven't seen it, but all I knew was the title. Yeah. As soon as you said the title, I was like, I've heard of that, but I knew fuck all about it. It got, like, so little coverage because it basically was released in a film festival last year i think like a canadian film festival or something was it tiff maybe or something maybe i can't i can't remember offhand um and then it basically was released in theaters in america or canada and then went straight to vod oh um so it was released in theaters and vod at the same time like um well, like their HBO Max yeah. releases and stuff. Yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. Interesting. So, okay. yes, that is my top of the year for sure. So that's your top of the top? That is my top of the top. I still think that's four, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to think about it. <laughs> you, you, you carry on. I've still got two. I've got two. You've got two. Right, I'm going to go for one that's uh, massively out of left field and that I... <sighs> Do you know what? I'm just going to go out 
on a limb and say it probably shouldn't be on the list because mm. it's not a horror film. <laughs> but I watched it, I think, in February and it just blew me the fuck away. And I watched it again very shortly after. Um, and it is Promising Young Woman. Mm. Mm. And I am sort of voting Allow for it. it. Yeah. Thank you. Allow it. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. But I, I, I was sort of like including it because... It was sold as a rape revenge movie. That's not what it is, but I feel like that's where the t- the trailers and the blurb kind of led us. Yeah. It is a revenge movie. It's definitely a revenge movie. Yeah, I would put it maybe a thriller before anything else. Yeah, revenge thriller. Rwenge. But it's still a genre <laughs> pick. So Rwenge. I think that justifies it. But I think... I, I just can't say enough good things about this film. To say that that was... Um, was it Emerald Fennell? The director? Uh, yeah, she's the debut director, isn't she? Cons- yeah, Sounds about that's right. her first mm. feature length. What the fuck? Imagine coming out of the gate with that. Mm. Just retire. Mm. That's it. You've yeah. made a masterpiece. And I think Carey Mulligan was just an excellent choice. Bo Burnham. What? Well, in fact, you know what? All of the casting was pitch perfect. Mm. And obviously very intentional. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just think there wasn't a thing about it that I didn't love. There wasn't a thing about it that didn't work. And I found it so emotionally affecting that I think the first the first time I watched it, for the last half an hour, I was in floods of tears. Mm. I remembered my fifth. Sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. First time I watched it, the last half an hour, I was in literal floods of tears. Yeah. And I cried for about half an hour after it ended. And when I thought about it the next day, I started crying again. <laughs> Yeah, mm-hmm. and I did that with Doctor Who once. <laughs> <laughs> Doomsday! I can't watch Doctor Who after that. I've never watched another episode of Doctor Who since that one. I'm gonna pretend that I know what you're talking about. I don't. It's think the it... last one with Billy Piper. It's very oh. upsetting. I haven't watched it since I was a kid, so it's like Tom Baker kind of. Oh, <laughs> That's I'm when on I David checked Tennant out. Train. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but yeah, there, there, there just wasn't a thing about it that I didn't love. I think the mm. soundtrack, that it looked incredible, mm. like the pastels and the very sort of whimsical way that it was filmed. And like twists that actually were surprising. Yeah. And the obviously it deals with very heavy subject matter, but I think it was interesting to sort of show how it wasn't just like demonising men. It wasn't like a yes, all men film. Mm. It showed how women can also be complicit in you know, allowing and covering up sexual assaults yeah. and harassment and there's a lot of ingrained misogyny and, you know, it was quite it was quite eye opening in that mm. regard, I think. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Um and a very tough watch in places. But I found myself laughing in parts as well. Like the the tone was just dealt with so incredibly delicately. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. For a first time feature director, that was insane to me. Yeah. All all the different parts just meshed so well yeah i think that's as close to a perfect film as i've seen this year which is why i had to talk about it Mm, Mm. yeah of course um yeah and i'm stoked to watch it again but i need to wait until i'm like emotionally ready (laughs) oh my god yeah (laughs) for sure yeah now is not the time (laughs) not in the run to christmas yeah maybe not maybe Maybe in the new year yeah (laughs) start it off right that's my four okay um, my next one is and actually both of mine are perhaps more uh, say more about how little I've watched this year rather than <laughs> okay. how good they are is it Marvel? Uh, no <laughs> neither are <laughs> um, I'm going to put forward Willy's Wonderland as my fourth okay um, I mean it's it's just fun <laughs> like it's mindless fun um, but you you don't always need more of a reason than that. Yeah, and like, I think I think a, a plot as kind of thin as I mean it's basically fri- Five Nights at Freddy's, right? The <laughs> idea of like these animatronic uh, figures coming to life and and attacking people. Um, that oh, that's spoilers was, <laughs> was popularized with recently with with Five Nights at Freddy's, um, which is just the dumbest game ever. <laughs> Have you ever played it? No, it's people dumb as play. fuck. Isn't it for like kids? What well, I've seen it's, people. It's, do you know what? No, it's not. <laughs> it's but it seems really full of animatronic and a bit boring. It's animatronic things that try and murder you. It's definitely not for kids. The actual it's one of those things uh, that has kind of like bendy the ink machine as well. They're not necessarily mm. aimed at kids, but it's it's found a massive. market with kids and therefore there's merchandising for kids. Right. Okay. Um, which is interesting. Like stabby <laughs> animatronics. Yeah. <laughs> 
Like I mean, the, yeah, essentially, it, they're the worst kind of animatronics. Essentially, the game, you sit in a control room and you have to open and close doors and you no. look at the CCTV to see where the animatronic things are, but one door has to be open at all times. No, you can close them, but they drain the, each door being closed drains the power. You only have a limited oh, amount of power. Because that's how doors the, work. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sounds legit. Each 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 animatronic has a specific rule set, and so you know it won't move if you're looking at it, for example. And okay. Yeah. So do, does the film like follow those rules, or does, no? The, they... it, it's just Five Nights at Freddy's is is the kind of game that's popularized that uh, not even subgenre, but just that okay. kind of like storyline. <laughs> Dabby <laughs> animatronic. That kind of trope, 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 trope. A bit like sweaty puppets. Um, <laughs> but yeah, oh. it's just it's just Nicolas Cage being Nicolas Cage. I think they could have had more fun with the actual people playing the robots themselves because okay. you get you know if you got if you got like a Doug Jones in or, or someone someone who is very in control of their physicality. Has there ever been a been... film? Yes, you would be. <laughs> Lots. We've talked about several of them. <laughs> um, I feel like you would be the person to ask. Has there ever been a film with Doug Jones and Javier Botet? <gasps> I haven't. I don't, don't know of any, but it would be amazing. Can they do a remake of Twins? <laughs> Where it's just them being creepy. creepy. Yeah. <laughs> when you say Willy's Wonderland, all I can think of is Mandy, but with puppets. <laughs> that means Nicolas Cage, so of course. <laughs> do I remember hearing that he has no dialogue in yeah. it? He doesn't speak. Still say a word. Why would you hide Nicolas Cage? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You're like snuffing out his crazy flame by not allowing him to. I yell. mean, he's pretty Surely. crazy. It, it would be, he manages the crazy world. Still. It would okay. be like casting a um, what are they called the brothers. <laughs> oh, those. You, you know exactly who I mean. I swear you do. <laughs> no, I don't. Scars guards. I didn't. But it would on. be like casting a scars gun and being like, but keep your face completely normal. Oh no. <laughs> no, it's not fun. Nobody <laughs> likes that. Um But yeah, no, it's fun. Like I think if they'd have if they'd have, for example, hired some and I know they're not to everyone's taste, but mime artists. Okay. Someone or, or even like even actually dancers, you know, someone who can kind of do the whole pop lock thing. That's the kind of mechanical look these characters should have, these kind of animatronics should have. But they didn't. But they didn't. Oh, it kind of looks shame. like someone in a bed pretending to do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think they could have had more fun with that, but for some reason they didn't. But yeah, like it's fun. Okay. So they took Not away nice. Nick Cage's voice, and then they didn't work on the physicality of the animatronics. <laughs> like it was You're more really about selling. says more about how little I watched this year than, than the quality of the film. But it was fun. So. That's a, that is a missed opportunity though, because I feel like one of the only redeeming features of a film like Terrifier was um, is it called Damien. Oh shit, I forgot his name. Um, <laughs> but the guy who played Art the Clown, mm. because he was an actual mime artist, so he, like, the physicality of the clown was the only redeeming part they of the film. freaked me right out. Mm. Yeah, it was genuinely creepy. But mm. to know that they could have hired somebody like that. Well, I, that would be my choice, you know, like, if, yeah. I, if I was involved with that. I mean, I'm still going to watch it. Who am I kidding? <laughs> it's on now TV, I think. Yeah, there you so. go. <laughs> There's excuse. another film that I think might have come out this year with uh, Nicolas Cage in it. It might have come out years ago. I just saw it on HMV the other day. Is it Prisoners of the Ghostland? Yeah. yeah that's it looks year. awesome. Apparently it's not. No! <laughs> it's on Shudder. It's on Shudder. I don't have Shudder. Oh. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> my my condolences. <laughs> I'm very sorry for your loss. <laughs> Can I offer you an egg at this trying time? <laughs> yeah, um, it lo- it looks really fun. Yeah, I I'm still gonna watch it. Yeah, the, this isn't like my opinion. I've just heard from a few people that because, it's a bit disappointing because it looks like if Ghost Rider and Mandy had a baby. Oh, that sounds terrible. It sounds, awesome. <laughs> it, sound, it sounds like Nicolas Cage squared. <laughs> Would um, Willy's Wonderland make a good double bill with the Banana Splits movie? Probably. Because, yeah, I might do that one day. (laughs) Just three hours of the same film. (laughs) Oh, God. Cool. Just have a Nicolas Cage marathon. Mum and Dad. Mandy. Mandy. Colour out of space. Colour out of space. Wicker Man. No, (laughs) no. The bees! No. (laughs) Fuck the bees. No. (laughs) You have to. No. Has to go. No. Drive angry then. Fuck you. (laughs) (laughs) 
I've ruined it. Fuck. I remembered my fifth film. Oh, which is? Go on then. It is. Uh, I remembered why I didn't remember it as well. Oh, no. It's Lamb. Oh, oh of course. <laughs> yeah, right. because, yeah. because, because it's Lamb. Um, I was talking to the guys about this earlier and I was like, <laughs> it's very A24. Mm. <laughs> Isn't that weird that we can say that and know exactly what that means? Yeah. Isn't that strange? <laughs> A very slow burn, not Fucked necessarily up. much dialogue. <laughs> Really fucking weird, <laughs> um, but good with like good actors and like good caliber. It, yeah, of um, um, amazing. Um, oh, what's the woman's name? I could never Numi remember. Rapace. That's it. I, I do, well, I'm no, taking a stab in the dark that that's how you pronounce it. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> um, she manages to portray an awful lot of emotion and feeling and. F- Thoughts without actually saying a word with just her facial expression. Good face acting. Mega face acting. Yeah. Very, very good. Um, actually, all of the actors, there's only three <laughs> and a half um, <laughs> actors in the film, basically. I think three you people see. People in a sheep <laughs> ish. <laughs> Some sheep and a sheep ish. Right. Um, I mean, the cover of the film. Pretty much tells you what the film is, doesn't it? The trailer, yeah. Like I, I got the gist from the trailer. So yeah, I so don't think that's a spoiler. It's not. It's no, it's not <laughs> uh, at this point. Um, yeah, it's they. It's a couple who live in Iceland in the middle of nowhere, and one day, whilst they are uh, birthing all their sheep, as they do every year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's very graphic. Oh, no. It's very graphic. Oh, There's like live sheep births and stuff. <laughs> Uh, and it's like, oh, the miracle of life. Anyway, um, <laughs> put it back in. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and one day, a lamb is born that isn't quite a lamb. Basically, it's who got... fucked a sheep? You find out. Is this like if the Revenge of Billy the Kid was high art? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Is it? Yes. Oh, I'm way more You've interested it. now. <laughs> I'm far more interested in this film than I was Absolutely before. Absolutely fucking called it. I don't know if the, um, I'm going to call it the horror element okay. of the film uh, is like uh, based in folklore. Oh, that would make sense. It it would. I'm not sure um, because it doesn't really make much sense as to why it, it exists okay. otherwise. Um, Did you say it's Icelandic? It's Icelandic, yeah. Okay. Well, they probably have weird folk tales. There are weird folk tales that are specific to everywhere, right? Yeah, I mean, it's Iceland um, where if the kids don't wear the new winter clothes that they get for Christmas, then a giant cat comes and eats them at night. Oh. <laughs> well. Yeah, well, this is tame by comparison then. Because <laughs> at Christmas Eve, all the kids get like brand new winter clothes, like a new winter coat or something. Jamming gifts. I know. And if they, and if they refuse to wear them... When they're out, like they don't wear their coat and wrap up warm, then a giant cat that stalks the countryside will come and eat them. Oh, I want to meet the giant cat. You're right. <laughs> I want to pet it. Oh, I want to kiss its little snoot. Oh, um, and hopefully not get eaten. Yeah, <laughs> but Iceland is great. Um, I love the Icelandic language. Anyway, I think it's just super interesting to listen to mm. because it's so far removed from. Yeah. Basically anything else. Like, I guess Scandinavian languages are the closest that you can match it to, but it's just... It's, like, magical to listen to. It just sounds like runes all the time. (laughs) Um, But, yeah, that's 100%. It was really fucking weird, and I really enjoyed it, and it's heartbreaking. Oh, no. Will it make me do an emotion? I hope so. Oh, no. (laughs) Because if it doesn't, then you might be dead inside. Oh, well, that might have to wait till after Christmas as well. <laughs> I think so, yeah. I cried. Oh, no. And, I, and I, it's rare that I cry at films. I think the last film I cried at was ever since I had. I cry at everything. Right, I nearly shed a tear at Hawkeye the other day. Yeah. <laughs> it's just when stuff is done particularly well and I'm just like marvelled by... That wasn't a pun, by the way. <laughs> but just like oh, blown wow. away by the magic of like TV and mm. cinema. Yeah. I get emotional. <laughs> So it doesn't even have to correspond with something being sad. Yeah. Oh, I'm screwed, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. 
But okay. Yeah. And that's me done. That's that's my top five for the year. That's a solid five, and you've given me a few things to add to my to watch list. I hope so. Nice. Cool. Well, you, Sarah. My last one then, um, and this is probably a really basic ass choice, but Ghostbusters Afterlife. <laughs> Speaking of crying. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, I haven't seen it. Oh, haven't seen I did it. several cries. <laughs> I haven't seen it, but I did think it would go in your top five. Did you? Yeah. Okay. Because you you did wax quite a lot of lyrical about how affected you were by it. So I I've talked about it a little bit on the podcast, but obviously um was diagnosed with autism in relatively recent memory. And like the representation of autistic people on screen is not very, there isn't exactly a mm. breadth of representation. Yeah. And most of it's male. So when I started watching this, basically it becomes very obvious very quickly that the little girl is the main character and that she is coded as autistic. Mm. Like at fir- the, the first kind of third, I was just like, oh, okay. And then she literally talks about getting overstimulated and not displaying emotions in the same way as other people. And I was like, fuck, that's undeniable. Yeah. And I mean, Dan Aykroyd is autistic, so mm. it makes perfect sense. I did not know that. Yeah. So, I mean, Ghostbook, he co-wrote the original, didn't he? So it would make absolute sense that they would kind of honour him. With I think character. I share a birthday with Dan Aykroyd. Do you? Just the one. I, Dan Aykroyd seems mm. cool. Yeah. Um, I'd like to go out for a drink with him. Yeah. <laughs> but I think... I was apprehensive because of how much this film had been delayed. Mm. And um, as with something like Halloween Kills, which I can only assume they had so long to fuck around with it in the edit that they ruined it. Mm. And I was worried that this might go the same way. Because if they've, you know, they're not just going to leave it on a shelf for a year and a half. They might be tempted to like recut it and re-edit and like, you know, try and hone it a bit more. But it was just perfect. Mm. And I've seen a lot of hate for it online and I don't really get it because it was fun. It was really heartwarming. It paid perfect homage to the original films and the original characters. It was really tonally consistent with the originals. Mm. Um, Paul Rudd was hilarious. Oh, Paul. He's just, he's always great, isn't he? Love him. But I have very few negative words to say about that film. I just had an absolute blast in okay. the cinema. And I cr- I cried on about three different occasions <laughs> for very different reasons. Yeah, <laughs> one of those films. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So it's, it's Again, not been out very long. a really long. solid list, I think. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm proud of you. <laughs> oh, that's, my, that's all that matters. <laughs> my last choice, and again, more about what I've said and what I've watched <laughs> in the party. And I think this is more about his, about how... Uh, batshit insane it is but malignant do you know Uh, what not the best film but in terms of just having fun and James Wan just doing what he wants to do I feel like maybe the studio just went oh you've made us this much money with Aquaman you can go off and do whatever the fuck you want now and he went right (laughs) I'm going to be weird yeah Um, I think you said Sarah like it wouldn't be out of place had it been released 30 years ago it's the most 80s horror film. Mm, not in terms of look, but yeah. style. And like Absolutely. It's not like a period piece. It's not like nostalgia bear. Yeah. But just tonally mm. and like, I can't really describe, just basically the, how batshit the storyline is. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. absolutely in keeping with some of the weird stuff that we love from the 80s. Mm. Things like Basket mm. Case and Demons and stuff that is considered like cult classic now. Mm. Um, yeah yeah no I, I, like <laughs> I really enjoyed what they did with it um, again not the, not the best movie per se but no. uh, it, it feels a bit tonally odd but actually <laughs> I enjoyed the journey it took me on you know yeah. enjoyed the way the way it progressed um, the ending does seem a lot like a different film than the beginning but I think that makes sense with the um, yeah kind of uh, the way the narrative unfolds yes I know Dan and I watched it and for the first hour, like we we had a blast from start mm. to finish, but the first hour we were both just like, what the fuck is yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Is this like a parody? Yeah. <laughs> Some of it is like the acting isn't great and it feels a bit weird for a James Wan film. Mm. And then you get to that last half an hour and I just grinned from ear to ear. Yeah. It's such a blast with it. Mm. It's so silly. But at the beginning you were like, James Wan? <laughs> James, why? <laughs> why James, have you done James, this? James, why? <laughs> 
Um, and there's like a really cool sort of instrumental version of uh, Where Is My Mind, which is one of my favourite songs yeah, yeah, ever. Yeah. Oh, neat. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah, um, that's my five. Cool. That is a wonderful film to end on. Excellent. Excellent, though. Um, as ever, we have had a complete blast recording this. I think we've got some really solid choices down this yeah. year. Considering not a lot came out, I think there's been some it's real goals. It's not the best year for horror movies, yeah. to be fair. There's, there's definitely been some diamonds hidden away. Um, mm. What uh, we will do is uh, I reckon we'll post our top fives on the Discord um, mm. when this releases so that there's a list somewhere yeah, on all of them sure. because I sure as hell didn't write mine down <laughs> um, but for anybody uh, who's not part of our discord yet then it's on our Patreon it's two squiddly dids a month mm-hmm. join our discord server you get access to minisodes um, and you can join in the fun because we would love to hear what your top fives are as mm. well for this year yeah. Um, and if you jump on board now you get a bargain because there's about 60 hours of extra content yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and a video of us dancing <laughs> oh no that, I'd prefer for that to stay buried thank you <laughs> well it's out now um, we love you guys thank you so much for supporting us for the past year it's uh, like we absolutely love recording the podcast it's it's our fun thing to do every week mm. um, and we couldn't do it without people like you listening to us and yeah. tuning in and like spreading us about and spreading us about <laughs> that's horrible um but yes thank you have an awesome holiday season uh and a brilliant new year and we will see you in january mm. stay spooky but make it festive <laughs> stay spooky 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 spooky, 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 spooky. <laughs> perfect yeah like that stay spooky <laughs> bye bye